Hi everybody, welcome to this very important lesson on history taking and DKA. So questions to ask about patients in DKA. And this is very important to not just new onset patients, but patients that, that come with the current DKAs. So anybody that works in the ED, the ICU, or the general peach floor is going to see these patients. So number one, let's start with a D. I'm not going to spend too much time here. All I want to do is refer you guys to another um, endocrine video online specific to taking history for insulin doses. So let me draw a line here. We're not going to talk about the diabetes part anymore. Let's talk about the K though. The K part, the ketosis part, is based on a simple fact. And that fact is that ketones mean that for that patient's body at that time, there is an insulin deficiency. Now that deficiency can be absolute or it can be relative. Absolute deficiency means that they actually, instead of having 100% of the insulin they need on board, they have 60 or 70 or 50%. And that's uh, for a non-diabetic, non-adherence issues, but for someone that is, they know they have type 1 diabetes, that's a new onset type uh, deficiency. For someone that has relative deficiency, it means that they're taking 100% of the doses, but the insulin just doesn't work, so they have increased insulin demands. Usually, that's going to be because of stress that they're going through, bodily stress, such an illness. Uh, it can be severe pain if someone is recovering from surgery or broken bones and things like that. And just generally speaking, increased insulin demands, not to, for DKA itself, but they can happen because of body changes. So if someone goes through, through puberty, for example, there's increased demands. If someone gains weight, there's increased demands of insulin. So that brings us to the questions that are very important to be asked for these patients. First and foremost, have you missed any doses? Second of all, if they're in a pump, have they had any pump problems? And we'll talk about those. And also we have to evaluate for, investigate for reasons leading into DKA, so the relative deficiency, so have you had any sickness? Let me draw a line here and scroll down where we make more space for ourselves to talk about the A part, the acidosis. Again, let's lay down some facts. It's a fact that if you have a reduced pH in a local environment, you're going to have vasoconstriction. And the vasoconstriction and the dehydration together explain for a lot of the symptoms that these patients have. It can happen in the head, it can happen in the gut, or it can happen in the muscles, in their extremities. So the questions that need to be asked are, have you had a headache? Any abdominal pain? Any nausea? any vomiting? Have you experienced fatigue or weakness? Fact number two, these patients, all the pediatric patients that show up in DKA are at increased risk of cerebral edema. And that's usually due to two reasons. One, the treatment itself, the DKA treatment predisposes them to have cerebral edema. But in rare cases, cerebral edema can be present before treatment, so the DKA itself. So we have to establish a good mental status level at the baseline as soon as we're seeing the patients. So it's very important to ask them about changes in mentation, so in changes in mental status, changes in personality, changes in memory. Some patients might have syncope or almost lose consciousness. Some patients might become more combative. Some parents report that the kids don't remember what they've said or what happened. So all these are very, very important. Let's scroll down here where we talk about the last thing for this lesson. And it focuses on things to know about the types of patients that you're going to encounter in DKA. So let's take three examples. We're going to say patient A, patient B, and patient C. So both patient A and patient B are on subcutaneous insulin, but patient A is actually ill. They have a, a sickness. Patient B is coming to decay because of non-adherence issues. And patient C is on an insulin pump. So when you're taking a history, we have to focus on specific parts of the history taking. For someone that is sick, we have to focus on the symptoms, specifically what symptoms they had, when they had them, how long they've had them. But the most important thing, and that's why it's a big thick hour here, is the actions they took to prevent decay. 
The patients that come to DKA in the emergency department that are non-diabetics because of sickness are only a very, very, very small percentage of the total DKA patients we have. If they're in communication with us and we advise them what to do at home, they could save themselves a trip to the emergency department. Specific to someone that you suspect in adherence, it's important to take a very good insulin dosing self-report. And I refer you again to the other video where it focuses on history taking for insulin doses. For some of the um, pump, you have to focus on the mechanical components of the pump. It's pretty simple. It's the machine itself, the tubing, and the insertion site. So either the first, the second, or the third can malfunction and stop insulin delivery. So let me change here in red because the things that we're going to write down here are very, very important. And we're going to talk about when they will go into decay. Patient A that is, has been sick for two days and has hyperglycemia for two days, they're building up ketones over those two days, it's enough for them to show up in decay after a couple of days. It doesn't usually happen at the beginning of the sickness. Patient B is a little bit of a relative uh, timing because they can go into two days, but that is because they're in a background of long-acting insulin omission. The long here is capitalized and underlined. I can't stress this enough. Actually, I can. I'm going to change into yellow and put an asterisk here. Missing short-acting insulin, so meal time insulin, will not make you go into DKA. Many patients say, oh, I missed my breakfast shot or my last dinner shot, and now I have, have woke, woke up with extreme vomiting and I'm in severe DKA. Usually that happens because they've been missing the long-acting shots that week either parts of the week or the whole week, it does take time. If you take your long-acting insulin, it should be enough to prevent you from going to severe DKA. For patients that are on the pump, though, it's much more dangerous because they can go into decay within a matter of hours. About six hours is when the ketones start presenting if the pump stops working. So let's zoom out here and scroll back up where we review the things we talked about. All the way about at the top about the ketones, we talked that ketones means insulin deficiency. And either that's non-adherence, it's a new onset of diabetes, or it's increased insulin demands probably due to sickness. So we have to ask about problems with taking insulin, insulin delivery, or sickness itself. When you take a history about the acidosis part, we have to focus on the symptoms of vasoconstriction causes either in the head, the gut, or the muscles. And it's really important to know that DKA increases the risk of these patients having cerebral edema, so we have to establish a good mental status baseline so, and ask specific questions about changing mental status in personality or memory. In the three patients, we took an example. If, we, if you're dealing with someone that is sick and takes up cutaneous insulin, it's important to focus on what actions they took to prevent DKA at home. If you're dealing with someone that you suspect, you suspect non-adherence, it's important to take a good self-report of insulin doses. These patients will go into decay over a couple of days, both of them, but it's important to know that for non-adherence patients, long-acting insulin omission is the culprit here. If you're having someone on a pump, you have to focus on the mechanical components, the pump itself, the tubing, and the insertion site, but it's key to recognize that these patients can and will go into decay overnight. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure that you check out the other endocrine videos online as well as the insulin dosing history taking video.